Well, Church, a very warm welcome to all of you, both uh, online and uh, on-site to our 11.30 a.m. service, and wish all of you a blessed Christmas. I'm Pastor Wailong, one of the pastors uh, in St. Jimmy's Church, and uh, this morning I will be leading the service. Scripture tells us that the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Jesus Christ is our life and light. In His name and in His power, let us worship Him. We pray, O Lord, purify our hearts that they may be worthy to become your dwelling place. Let us never fear to find rooms for you, but come and abide in us and we also may abide in you who were born into the world for us, you who live and reign, King of kings and Lord of Lord, now and forevermore. Amen. Now the worship will lead us in the time of praising God. Those of us who are in the sanctuary, kindly just be reminded that you are not to sing, but you can adopt other posture to worship our Lord. Amen. Let's praise Him today. It's a great day. will never be the same because of what you have done. On this day, you are born. 
Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, we thank you for your love and for your sacrifice for us. And we are whole and right because of what you have done.
Your name reigns high above all things, over sickness, over pain, over any of our problems. Father, we lift your son's name on high. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We are privileged to be able to be sons and daughters. Thank you, Father. Church, as one body, as one voice, let us pray to collect together. All praise to you, Almighty God and Heavenly King, who sent your Son into the world to take our nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that as we are born again in him, so he may continually dwell in us and reign on earth as he reigns in heaven with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Let us begin a time of intercession. We pray for the world. Almighty God, most loving and sovereign over all things, we are thankful that the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, redeems us from the yoke of sin and the bondage of death, closing the door of hate and opening the door of love all over the world. In a time where the pandemic has impacted the world in unprecedented ways, may all who are broken and in need experience abundant life that is found only in knowing the goodness and kindness of God. We pray for the Church. Most merciful God, in whom we find restitution and restoration, strength and solace, grant that we as your children may experience the love of Christ born in our hearts afresh, that we would know that God is with us as we share that love with a world in need. And in doing so, offer your hope to the hopeless and rest to the restless. We pray for those among us in need. Lord and giver of all good things, who in your love has given us reason to rejoice, let all who struggle this season, physically, mentally or spiritually, be filled the peace of the Christ Jesus, to know that perfect love casts out all fear. May they be steadfast as they await your coming again, and that they will be found to be refined as gold, pure as frankincense, and fragrant as myrrh. For all prayers uttered, and even the ones unuttered, we lay them before you, thankful that you, our gracious, loving God, hear our prayers. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Session, a very warm welcome and blessed Christmas to all of you seated here in One Leaden Road and joining us online. I'm Pastor Siang Guan and I just want to extend on behalf of the team as well a warm welcome, especially if you are here with us for the first time, or perhaps uh, you, are, you have brought a friend 
Maybe can you just raise your hands so that our host can put a welcome pack into your hands? Anyone? Yes, I see. Yes, up in front. Those behind too? Yes. Welcome. And if you are with us online, uh, you, you can just drop us a message and our online host will be with you too. So glad that you are able to be with us, whether on-site or online. Now, for those of you who are new, let me just uh, let you know that we have three regular weekend services. Uh, one at 5 p.m. on Saturday, and then there are two services at 9.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. And if you need to, in this current situation, uh, we're not sure how long it will persist, if you are to come and join us, you will need to register for the service. And to do that, you will need our SJC updates. The QR code is up on the screen. So if you can, uh, you will need to scan this and follow the instructions step by step. Yeah? And continue with it. Save that number uh, onto your phone so that you will always be updated. Yes? So we hope to see you even after this weekend service. The Lord bless all of you. Right now, I'd just like to continue in our worship, and especially if you are a visitor and not yet a believer, uh, just to let you know that as a Christian, we believe that God has given us all things. And it is a way that we continue to worship God with our, uh, what He has given us in the first place. We call it our tithes and our offering. Shall we pray, church? Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that you have given us all things, and most of all, we thank you for giving us your Son, Jesus Christ, who has come. And Lord, we have seen your glory through his life. Thank you for all that you've blessed us with, and it is our duty, our joy, even to return what you have given us so that, Lord, it can be used as a blessing to the nations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture reading is taken from Mark chapter 10, verses 17 to 21. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal, do not, def do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honour your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So good to see all of you here, whether on site or online. And uh, I'm just curious, how many of you here gathering on site 
you are here for the first time since the circuit breaker. Can you lift up your hand? Show your hand. Wow, wow. Anyone else? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So good to see you here. And uh, although you can only see half the face, I believe your full body and spirit is here. And those who are getting online too, you are fully with us in worship. And I heard somebody tell me, well, Pastor, it's very good. Huh? can worship online and get iron clothes and watch the worship at the same time. I say, be careful, because when you're totally into worship, you may burn a hole in your clothes, you know. <laughs> yeah, you've got to change your wardrobe quite often. Better not do that, right? Huh? But uh, I think it is so great that when the opportunity opens up for us to gather this way, we are all here, because worship is not just about us and God. Worship is us together as children of God before our Heavenly Father. Now, this season of Christmas, as always, is a very, very special season because it's a time that we remember and celebrate the birth of Christ Jesus in this world 2,000 years ago. What's so special about a baby born in a little town called Bethlehem so long ago when 385,000 babies are born every day today? And throughout human history, there are so many great men and women who have walked this earth. Why is it that only the birth of this child still celebrated so widely even today? And that's because this was an unrepeatable event that has made significant impact in many people's lives in every generation. And I'll offer you three reasons why this is so, and they all start with P, right? The, pro the first P is promise, the second, pedigree, and then power. Could you repeat after me? Promise, pedigree, and power. Promise because the birth of this child is the fulfillment of God's promise to come into our midst to redeem and restore troubled humanity. And these promises were recorded for us in the Bible over many generations through various prophets hundreds of years before Jesus was born. And these promises, numbers in the hundreds, cover a wide range of uh, topics. For example, the circumstances of his birth, the purpose of his life, and God's strategy to fulfill those purposes. So that all of us know that when this child is born, you know this is a child of promise. For instance, the circumstances of his birth, the town that he will be born, the race and the tribe that he will be born into, the conception, uh, the foreign dignitaries coming to pay homage to him, and the political situation surrounding his birth that necessitate his parents bringing him back, uh, down to Egypt to escape from trouble in Jerusalem, in Israel. And all this was recorded in the Bible beforehand, hundreds of years beforehand, so that when this child is born, we recognize this is the child of promise, the Messiah as the Jewish people know it. And it's not anybody else. I think this is very significant because none of us have any book in the world that tells us that uh, you, there's a child going to be born in Singapore, you know, and he got this pedigree, pedigree and so on. No, no, there's none of us have this but only God. That's why it's something unrepeatable. And then there is the purpose of his life, the promise about the purpose of his life. He will come as a shepherd of his people. Those scattered, confused, wounded, oppressed, confused people. And he said that I am here to be a shepherd because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he also would be the way through the wilderness Wilderness in the scripture describe a spiritual condition of hunger and thirst of the soul, barren resources, vulnerable to danger, that unless a way is found out of the wilderness, life seeps away from you to the point of death. He came to be that way in the wilderness for those, you know, you are in the state of wilderness. And then there is God's strategy, the promise about God's strategy of how He would deliver His people to fulfill the purpose, to be the shepherd, to be the way in the wilderness. He will be the child 
be on the throne of David, right? And more of, most of all, he one day will be that sacrificial lamb. He would suffer for the suffering, die for the dying. His hand and his feet will be pierced and his blood shed in order to redeem the world, in order to pay for your sin and my sin, to redeem us from our sinful nature and taken us back to the Heavenly Father. Now, all this were recorded in the Bible beforehand, in the Old Testament, before he was born. So that when this child came into this world, you know this is a child of promise. And God is coming here to fulfill his promises. The second P is pedigree. Pedigree. Pedigree is distinctive origin. He is God becoming man, taking the form of man, born to a virgin called Mary. And in, uh, he did that in order to dwell in the midst of man, in order to identify with man, in order that man can identify with him. Now, you may be very, very fond of marine life. You spend more time under the sea than uh, on land. Eh? And, uh, but, you know, you'll never be accepted as a fish by the fish unless you are born as a fish. Correct? You may swim like a dolphin, you may stealth like a shark, but you will very soon discover you are not a shark when a real shark comes chasing you for his dinner. Some people, people, human beings, try to be God when they are not, and they brought only misery to themselves and to those people around him, and some powerful and even misery to the world. But this is God becoming man. Such humility, not a man trying to be God, such pride, such presumptuousness. It's God taking the form of man in order to dwell in our midst, in order to identify with us, in order that we could identify with him. His pedigree, unrepeatable, God becoming man. And then the third P is power. Unrepeatable signs of power expressed to this child's life. Some people think that Christians are a bit cuckoo, you know, to believe in all the miracles, uh, outrageous miracles recorded in the Bible, what turning water into wine, uh, uh, raising people dead for four days already, you know, smelly already can bring up back to life, uh, uh, walking on water, uh, 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 what you call, feeding 5,000 people with just five loaves and two fishes, and telling the storm to come down, be still, and the waves really come down, so obedient, like a poodle. I say, how can Christians be so blind to believe something so unbelievable? And that's because we assume that Jesus is just another man, another ordinary man, made great because of the disciples' tall tale. But if we for a moment open our hearts to entertain perhaps what all these things that say in the scripture is true, if you put your mind together, to think through this, to investigate this, you will realize that it's not surprising that this is possible because it's not mere man. It's God who became man who dwell in our midst. And it's something unrepeatable, but it has made impact in people's life. Do you know why? I want to tell you a secret. The greatest power of all that trumped all these supernatural miracles, the greatest power of all, it's a power that Jesus could transform life. And he could give you a new life. That is fantastic. If you're a medical doctor, you know, if you diagnose a, 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 a sickness properly, give the right medicine, the person will recover. But you know, if you're a psychologist, you're a counsellor, headache, you know. Because they deal with the soul. Just because a person knows it is right, it doesn't mean that he's able to change or overcome or follow your advice. Correct? Jesus, the greatest of all, His power is really to bring new life into us from where we were, the mess that we had grown up. And that's exactly what happened to me 37 years ago. 
That's why Christmas is so meaningful to me. On Christmas Eve 37 years ago, there's a change in my life. I found a way. He is the way. Don't know about you. I, I was raised in an education system that gave a lot of value, put very high value on science and logic. As if only science and human reasoning is the one that can establish truth, propagate norms, and bring advancement to human society. And the only reason I started going to church after my A-levels was because wedding in church is nice and cheap. Seriously. My older sister was the first to get married in church. I was there. I rather like, like it, you know, and uh, uh, don't have to buy a rose pick, five types of gold, 30, 40 tables, just a simple wedding ceremony in church, simple, sweet, and meaningful. After that, wedding reception for a few hundred people that don't burn a hole in my pocket. Yeah. And some more, yeah? you don't have to pay the pastor who conduct the ceremony, you know. And he won't get angry because good pastor don't serve God for money, you know. So cheapskate. But that was really the reason I started going to church. Now, after going there for a few weeks, I rather enjoyed the sermon. The part I don't like was the singing part. Because all the songs new to me, I feel very embarrassed. Got to stand so long, I got to mimic as if I know the song. Actually, I don't know the song. And then these people around me, why they are so in? Uh? Well, some of the songs they sing, love song to God. Oh, wow, my hair stand, you know. But the sermon, I pretty like it because it was good food for thought for a young man looking for his place in the world. And I was gathering good material to build my future. But I did not feel a need to deal with my past. I thought I was a pretty good boy. I was always the obedient boy of my mummy. Just like this rich young ruler read for us, he was a good man. So when Jesus said in the verse 19, you know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear fault witnesses, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. He immediately answered Jesus, you know, all this, teacher, all this I've kept from my youth. Right? You know, any woman, any mother, would love to have this young man to be her son-in-law. Young, rich, position of responsibility, and most of all, a good man. Have not committed adultery, have not committed murder, never steal, lie, defrauded, honour his parents. Right? The Bible didn't tell us whether he was tall, dark, or handsome. But with all these other attributes, apa lagi mau? What else do you want, right? Now, I felt I was quite a good boy too. That any girl would feel very lucky to be my girlfriend. Thick skin like anything, right? Cannon also cannot penetrate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm quite dark. Not that tall, not that handsome. But I've not killed anybody before. Not married, obviously haven't committed adultery. Do not steal. Well, I only took some coins from my father's pocket, you know, the trousers hang behind the door. Never taken any bank notes, you know, only small change one is a, once in a while. Not stealing, right? Correct? Not stealing, right? Haven't been, both been a false witness in the court of law. Haven't defrauded anybody of money. Honor father and mother. Every time before I meal, I say, Apa sik fan. Ama sik fan. Kwai jaya. Good boy. But God was very gentle to me. He peeled off my ego layer by layer. I may not have committed murder, but I've certainly said bad things about people. And that was character assassination. I've I didn't commit adultery, never committed adultery, 
but I have certainly dabbled with pornography. I have read legit pornographic material. You know what's legit pornography material? When I was younger, the mainstream Chinese newspaper I read, they have graphic details, you know, whenever they report uh, uh, a crime of sexual in nature, sex crime. My father was the one who bought the newspaper, so it's legit for me to read, right? And I indulge in all those reports, reading through all the details. My young mind, primary school, was filled with all this filthy imagery that's unhealthy. And all those are part of me. And other ways I've lied, I've cheated people, small thing, big thing. I've dishonored my parents in other ways. I'm, I was far worse a man compared to this rich young ruler. Far worse. And God have mercy on me. After more than a year of attending church faithfully, I tell you, I'm better than many Christians. Although I wasn't a Christian, I went to church every Sunday, very faithfully. But after attending church for more than a year, the Lord dealt with my past. 37 years ago, Christmas Eve, that evening, I remember very clearly, I rode my motorbike up the slope at St. John's the Margaret's Dover Road, and I sensed so clearly the father was waiting for me, welcoming his son home. And throughout the service, my, wa- my heart was so warm with love, I heard him say, Son, tonight is the night you come home. Tonight is the night you come home. I couldn't wait for the pastor to finish preaching. The moment he issued the invitation to, for people to come forward to pray, nobody need to nudge me. I rushed up of anybody for, from, uh, ahead of everybody else. Eyes full of tears, heart so warm with love. I was before a loving father. I did not need to hide anything anymore because I'm facing a God who knows all about my life, who knows every detail and still loved me, still accepted me and called, telling me to return home. Somebody in church led me to the prayer of repentance. I told him everything that I knew that was not right. I dealt with my past, and I invited Jesus into my life. Things was not the same again. God was real, and He's still real until today. After 37 years, He's still real and more real. And that was the change that is so significant because, you know, Guilt in our lives, uh, there's only one way to deal with it. Only one way. You, you, you cannot ignore it. You cannot belittle it and say, never mind. It still come back to bug you. The only way to deal with it is you are able to confess to another person before God and before God who can really release forgiveness to you and cleanse you. I tell you, the moment I did a big rock rolled out of my heart. I felt so light in my spirit. No more guilt. I was totally forgiven a new man before God. And I had a new life. Still living that new life. Now, this rich young ruler had everything going for him. But yet, he knew he lacked something. He was the one who came to Jesus. Jesus didn't, was the one that wasn't the one who pointed out to him. He came to Jesus. As Jesus was setting out of his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to be saved? No, to inherit eternal life. What must I do to inherit eternal life? He was rich, he was young, he has good position, he was a good man, he thought, and he knew he he, he wanted something he didn't have, that is eternal life. For most of us, we understand eternal life as life forever and ever. In a Jewish understanding, eternal life is more than long life that lasts forever and ever. You know, what was the point uh, that you live forever and ever on an island called paradise? Morning, fresh sashimi uh, fish. Evening, lobster salad. 
come Chinese New Year, hunt for abalone, ray, uh, roast a raw pig, you know. Quite fun to live like that for a month. Lah. But forever and ever, milk. <laughs> Even the Christmas season uh, has already filled your stomach too much, right? Eternal life with God in the Bible, is, uh, eternal life in the Bible is about life with God because only God is eternal. Life based on anything else on earth is not eternal because everything on earth is temporal. You understand what I'm saying? Eternal life is life with God because only God is eternal. Not life based on anything else on earth because everything on earth is temporal. Eternal life is life with God in the place that there's no more fear of global warming. Eternal life with God is a life that there's no more strife, no more suffering, no more tears, no more sadness, no more degeneration, no more beauty saloon. Plastic surgeon out of job, you'll be very beautiful, very handsome. And that is a life that, that evil has got no more power. Only the holy, good, and loving God who reigns a king, a king, a king of kings, Lord of lords, who is also your heavenly father. And that is a life of love, joy, peace that you never have enough of. Even eternity is not enough for you to savor it. And that is just a glimpse of the eternal life that as far as we could describe. So this rich young ruler, all the money he had, he couldn't buy it. The careful life he cultivated couldn't assure him of a secure place with this eternal father. So he came to Jesus, what more must I do? What more must I do? And Jesus replied to him in verse 21. Jesus looking at him, loved him, and said, you lack one thing. Go sell all that you have and give to the poor. You have treasure in heaven. Come, follow me. And the following verse says, disheartened by what's saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possession. Now, did Jesus set a very, very high bar in order to trip him? Hmm. So mean. No, I, I don't think so. Why do I say that? Because you look at this verse properly. Jesus, looking at him, loved him. Loved him. You, you may have encountered a school teacher, a very mean school teacher, you know, who set very difficult questions, two grades higher than you, than, than you, are, you are at, and in order to fail you, because so enjoy failing students. Right? And then, and then he said, you know why I fail you? To show you that you're not quite there yet. So you will study harder, you work harder, because I love you. Do you believe that? But the Bible says Jesus loved him. Jesus knew wealth was his bondage. He could not part with his earthly possession. Jesus was, wasn't asking him to sacrifice his wealth. Jesus was telling him to exchange his earthly possession, which he can't take with him when we go to heaven, beyond this earth, in exchange for treasure in heaven. He said, go sell, then you have treasure in heaven. Exchange treasure in heaven that no one can take away from him. Such a good deal. But he loved his earthly possession more than his heavenly possession. He wants something he can touch now, feel now, that he can own now. And he treasured all this great possession more than the desire to follow Jesus. That's why he went away disheartened. And the scripture was very clear because of his great possession. Sad couldn't let go of something in order to gain something that really would lead to what he wanted. So this rich young ruler thought that he need to do more 
in order to inherit eternal life. Jesus was telling him to leave all and follow him to eternal life. He is the way to eternal life. Eternal life is not about us doing more, reaching higher, to be more perfect. Eternal life is about us following Jesus, who is the way, who paved the way from heaven to earth and came to earth to invite us, to bring us back to the Heavenly Father, the eternal life, the abundant life having a loving Father over us, watching over us, caring for us all the time. One of the things I enjoy doing with my wife is to travel to places, look at the beauty of God's creation. We developed this liking in the early days of our marriage when I was sent to London for training for a year. So every time there was a break, I would rent a car and uh, we'll drive out of London uh, to visit various parts of the United Kingdom. This was 1991-92. What does that mean? No GPS. No smartphone. No Google Map or Waze, right? But all we needed was two things. One, uh, A to Z London to help us weave our way out of London. And then the second is the A to Z Great Britain uh, and to help us to go to all over UK. You know, uh, the, the, the road in UK is very systematic. They are all numbered. Single-digit motorway, double-digit highway, three-digit is dual-carriage trunk way, and four digits, there are these small country roads. Uh, dangerous to travel on if you're not familiar, especially in a mountainous area. Uh, but... What we would do is that before we set out, we look at a map, we have a piece of paper, write down the number of the road to travel, turn left or right at the next junction to the next number and to the next number. And as I drove, my wife would track the progress on the map and look at the sign. The sign will tell you what's the next number coming out. And we'll always get to our destination. Now, nowadays, you can still get A to Z map. But most people will go for a GPS uh, Waze or uh, Google Map, right? Now, what do you prefer? A map or a GPS? What do you prefer? This young ruler came to Jesus for a map to eternal life. He wanted to figure his way out all by himself. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? But Jesus offered to be his GPS. Come follow me. I know the way. I am the way. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no map in this world to take you to eternal life. You may have a blueprint for a business strategy, for a project they can follow and track very nicely but there is no blueprint to eternal life. In fact, there's no, not even a, a, a blueprint, a map for life on earth. Is there any map that tells you that at 20, you're going to meet three potential spouses and where each of these potential spouses will lead to where and what kind of life contour? Is there a map like this? And then you make your choice. Or is there a map that tells you all the career choices for you, what fits your personality, your experience, and where it would land you exactly. Is there a map that will tell you that at 55, you're going to be grandparents, or at 65, you'll meet a health crisis? You, there's no map in the world like that. And people go to fortune teller, hoping to buy a part of this map, and take comfort that, oh, this is my life, I'll follow it believing that it is true. You have heard people say, all roads lead to Rome, as if there are many ways to eternal life. You heard about that before? My question is, who said it? Has this person who said it been to eternal life? Does he know the terrain of life so well surrounding this eternal life that he knows that this way also can reach, that way also can reach, this way can also reach. 
if there is one person on earth who can give us that man, it would be Jesus because he is God from eternity, came into this world to show us the way to eternal life. If there's one person who could do it, it would have been Jesus. But Jesus didn't give us a map to eternal life. Why? He didn't want to be our fortune teller. Life is not fated, fixed, that you just track like that. No, it's not like that. There's no numbered roads for you in the life. He wants to be our shepherd. He wants to be the way in the wilderness for us because life is about a journey. So this rich man misunderstood. He wanted to do everything by himself, but Jesus offered to be his shepherd, to be his way. Come, follow me. Come, follow me. And Jesus wanted to take him in a life journey of transformation, a life journey of discovery. Life journey is not about being transported to a destination. It is about enjoying everything that comes in our midst and growing at it, whether it's easy or it's hard. But those things change us. And hopefully, in God, we will be transformed to be more and more the person that He's designed us to be. Now, all of us has been affected by the COVID-19. We all know that. And you know very well, there was no map to tell us that this was coming, correct? Did anybody know there was a map you didn't tell us? Can you own up, please, now? And there is no map to tell us when we're going to get out of it, how we're going to get out of it, correct? But life goes on. Wow. Jesus is saying to us, come follow me. I know the way. I am the way. Let me be your GPS. That's like Psalm 23 say, Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear, fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. I was at a very, fairly large meeting online recently, and a few people in that meeting asked a question about mental health of people going through COVID-19. And a few days later, I called one of the questioners who happens to be a ministry coach because I want to hear more from him. And he was explaining to me something very common, a sense of isolation, common that many, many people felt, a sense of frustration, even questioning the purpose of life, tension, some people even experience unexplainable fear, a state of panic they couldn't explain. And some lost a total sense of worth because they could no longer function the way they were accustomed to before. So I asked him the next question, what can we do about it? He said, for a start, something very simple. You need to have platforms or groups that people can feel very free to share what they are going through. Why? Because COVID isolates. COVID isolates, and we need to reach out. We ourselves will break out of the isolation. We have got to help other people to break out of the isolation. Then as we share our story, we realize that actually what we are going through is not abnormal. Somebody else understands what we are going through. And we need this to break away from this thing that keeps isolating us, still limiting our freedom. And as I thought about this, in the light of what we are saying today, He is the way, the takeaway for me is that we do not follow this way in isolation. We do not follow this way all by ourselves. We follow this way with one another because when Jesus invited this rich young ruler to join him, follow him, he was inviting him to join the band of disciples already following Jesus. Someone will introduce us to the way. We don't just discover it all by ourselves usually. And we will walk with one another to keep to the way and not fall by the way. Now this COVID 
is something that we have not encountered before in human history. For some people, it has been that pause button. Everything stood still for you, still for you. For some people, it's just a play button. Everything continue as normal. For some people, it's the reverse button. Things got set back a few years. You almost have to restart from further back. But for some other people, it's the fast forward button. Everything has turned Mickey Mouse. I don't know whether you all know what I'm trying to describe. I suspect some may not. You know. I was trying to describe cassette player. You know, cassette player, you press play button fast forward. What happened? Mickey Mouse. You're right. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, go ask your parents. Your parents have knowledge you do not know of. Some people just want to press the record button. They don't like the old script. They want to record a new script over their old story. But sadly, for some people, it is the eject button. The music stops and there are no more. Now, Jesus is not here to change our old tapes. His way is to come layer over our life, his story, because your life in the past matters to him, whether good or bad. He is here to layer his story over yours. And as you open your eyes, open your heart to say, yeah, this is the way. I want to follow it. You realize that it begins to unlock and put together things in the past. He has been there without you knowing, without you seeing. He has loved you without you even loving Him. And everything began to fit together. And that was what I experienced myself as well. Once I was open to Him being the way, things began to make sense. Things about life got clarified immediately. The question that I used to have in the scientific mind to interrogate God, no more of those questions, but loving question to want to know the Father who loves me. I want to know Him more and more. And this is the way that Jesus came to pay for us and inviting us to join Him, to be with Him. Say, come follow me. Would you follow Him? Would you follow Him? Now, in the moment we are going to pray, uh, is our own response to God together and also as individual. And as I think about it, I uh, pray for all of us gathered here. Perhaps there are some of us here who is like me before this, that I didn't know there was such a thing called the way. All right? And then God mercifully showed me the way and I took it. Perhaps you are in uh, that situation today that you know enough. You don't know the detail ahead, but you know enough. This is the way I want to try. Today, we want to pray for you specially because this can be a very special day for you, a special new beginning for you. But in our midst, there could be also those who have followed for, uh, follow the way, familiar with the way, but somehow along the way, things got, you got distracted by something. You went off you got a detour, but somehow today you felt God say, come back, come back. And He hears you. He hears the, uh, the, 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 the thing you're speaking in your heart to Him. He hears that, and He wants to strengthen you and welcome you back. And there may be some of us here, we are faithful followers of the way. Do you know Christians are called followers of the way in the early days? Yeah. We are faithful followers of the way, but we are hitting something that are not quite familiar, uh, and, and things have been hard going. And today, you are here to say, God, I want to recommit myself to you. I want to receive your grace and strength for the year that is ahead, because I want to keep following the way, be faithful, and I just need your spirit to refresh me. So whether you are here for the first time, you say, I want to jump into the way, or whether you want to return to the way, or whether you want uh, strength from God, 
to give you new grace to persevere in this way. We're going to pray for you, right? Now, uh, what we're going to do, because normally, in normal circumstances, we can pray for you in front, but today, we we'll ask you to remain where you are. But everybody will be praying, our eyes closed, our heads bow. but anybody who felt that any words that spoken today, you can relate to, and you want to speak to God about it, you want to receive His touch, a special touch from Him, you can stand up from where you are, where nobody else is looking. You just make a determined decision. Lord, that is me. And I want to do that exchange, that interaction with you today. Hear my prayer, O oh Lord. If that's you, you can stand up when I ask you. Is that okay? Clear? Good. <clears throat> Come, let's uh, go to God in prayer. We close our eyes. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. So if any of the situation uh, that you encounter describes you, I just invite you to stand where you are. Just stand where you are, whether you want to walk in the way, in a new way. You want to return to the way. Or you want to commit yourself, Lord, give me strength for the new way ahead. Nobody is looking. You can just stand where you are. Just stand where you are. Yes. Thank you, brother. Anybody else? Yes, just stand where you are. We are all children of God before Him. Whether we know Him or not, we are His children. And if He came to be with us, remain with us. Yeah, just stand where you are. Whichever words that you felt, yeah. Lord, that is what I desire from you this morning, this special day. Just stand where you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A prayer companion uh, will come to you and pray with you personally. <clears throat> but I'll just say a general prayer for all of us. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else before I start praying? You may stand where you are. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to our midst in order to bring new life, in order to bring hope, in order to bring peace, in order to bring joy. And you poured out your love in the manner that you came in a manner that you have given your life that we may have abandoned life, abundant life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want to have nothing that hinders us from pursuing you, from following you. Lord, we desire what you have prepared for us. Something special, especially for my brothers and sisters who are standing. We have prepared something special for them. Lord, pour forth into their lives and their hearts, of oh God. Pour forth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can okay, invite all of us to stand as we dedicate ourselves to Him, to respond to this God who came to us, remain in us. This is It's me. 
Church, may the word just continue to speak to you. And the word that Jesus is the way, continue to live within our lives. And may it manifest within us. Church, as we continue to celebrate this day, celebrate the birth of Christ, let's continue to worship and praise him with our voices. Amen. Let's sing some carols this today. <laughs> Glory to Christ, who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I'd like to invite you to join me in a closing prayer before I pronounce the benediction. Please respond in the words in yellow. As we remember that Jesus is the Word, made flesh in our midst. Now may His incarnation fill your hearts with joy and peace. And Jesus is the promised Saviour, born of Mary. May His birth among us renew your hope. And Jesus is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. May the gift of His presence 
bring forth rejoicing. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit now be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Let me just give us some quick announcements even as we draw this service to a close. For those uh, parents who have children and tell your kids, I ask that uh, you'll send one of you to go and uh, uh, receive your children back and the rest perhaps can go down to the plaza or the car park. And uh, for all of you, the rest of you, a blessed Christmas and want to just remind you to check out on your way out, right? The safe entry checkout. Thank you and have a blessed Christmas weekend.